City Glitch from Mind Fungus is a game about a ghost girl in a city. There's cats and a bull, and you have to turn lights on. I don't know narratively what the hell this game is about, but what I can tell you is that it's two pound nine pence on Steam with ten percent off at the moment, which puts it at one pound eighty eight, which is a very small amount of money for what is a really nicely polished and interesting puzzle game. My code was provided to me by the developer. When I first loaded into the game, I was struck with the graphics. Even though this has got this ghost city thing going on, it's got all this neon. And even though it's about ghosts and cats uh, and turning lights on, it's also got this weird cyberpunk vibe, which I really like. Um, aesthetically, it's very much to my taste. Uh, I like it an awful lot. There is a low graphics mode in the options, which takes away the sort of the CRT gridding they put over the top of it. Um, takes away a lot of the visual polish as well. I, I really like the high graphic mode. And to be honest, I don't think most people would have to turn it onto low graphics mode for performance. It'll be more down to taste. Yeah, the game is basically you slide around lighting up uh, buttons on the floor essentially uh, when all the buttons are lit the levels over so you have to avoid things coming towards you or things on timers going like in straight lines or at one point a ball that chases you um, the game is really nicely put together there's nothing in the way of playing you can just keep playing if you keep dying it's fine just keep hitting redo um, you can you can undo a move if you want you can restart levels there's absolutely nothing in the way it's just you and the puzzle uh, it's really nice and it's nice to see a puzzle game that doesn't try and do more than just be a puzzle game. Um, it's a really nice balance of aesthetics and interesting puzzles. The puzzles are are really quite challenging. They range from easy to really hard. And like the two zones I've been in, each zone has got one puzzle. And I just looked at it and I have no clue where to even start getting that puzzle done. Um, but that's, that's a good thing because it's, it makes you rub your chin and like a puzzle game should be puzzly, you know. You should have to really work it out. And uh, the difficulty doesn't seem as linear as what well. There's no like progression from really easy to really hard. But that's because multiple puzzles open up at once and give you multiple paths to go. So you could accidentally fall on a hard path or an easy path. But I think most people will complete all the puzzles in a zone before they move on. Um, I don't know how long it is. I've played a little bit of it today. Really enjoyed what I've played of it. And this is very much my early impressions. Puzzle games aren't something I like to stream because uh, <laughs> because then people see me sitting there rubbing my chin for ages while everyone else on earth has got the answer. But uh, I do enjoy them a great deal in my own time. And this is a good one that I'll be going back to again and again, I think, because, wow, yeah, those aesthetics is really nice. Sound, movement, all of it is really nice. And it's got this real nice ambience to it, which I like. Um, all in all, quite positive. Uh, if you don't like puzzles, though, don't play this. This is literally a pure puzzle game. There's no point even looking in if you don't like puzzles. But uh, for me, yeah, it, it was it was an enjoyable experience, and, and I'm looking forward to going back to it. 95 tricky levels across seven cities, apparently. Easy to play, but offers deep challenges. These are all things the store page is saying. Um, optional turn count displayed with mastery goal. Yeah, that's interesting, always interesting. I'll never hit that on any of them, I don't think. Optional low graphics mode, reduced shimmering. Uh, easy resizable window, play while watching streams or queuing for games. Yeah, a lot of games have been saying that. I've seen a lot of things on Steam going, look, you can play this while you're waiting for other shit to do. And I think that's mostly a result of people's computers being more powerful over recent years, so they can just have multiple games loaded. And I think also the trend towards multiple monitor setups mean that you can have one thing on one screen, another thing on another screen. That, that's good. It's nice that these games want to fit in this niche, and it's a niche that... That, yeah, I, I like, and I've I've many a time had multiple games loaded on my machine. Sometimes I've had like three games minimized. <laughs> they just keep going back and forth. So I'm sure I'm not the only one that does that. So that's nice that they, it's nice that they put that there. I, I think it's an interesting genre, an interesting sort of position to fit other genres into, I should say. Yeah, the game you play while you're waiting for other things to happen. <laughs> Well, yeah, this is very much drop-in, drop-out. And for the price point, it's £2.09. is not a lot of money for such a nice, charming game. Thank you for watching. I've been HexDSL, and this has been City Glitch, a game I'm quite impressed with.